Story recap here. Today I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and sci-fi film called Arena. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a star station somewhere in the galaxy, patrons flock to the arena to watch a match between alien fighters. The main show features Horn, the six-time defending champion, facing his opponent, Spinner. The two slug it out on the center stage until Spinner's arm is severely damaged, and he loses it in the first round. To balance the strength between the species, the arena uses a Seiko 3000 handicapping system. The handicappers decrease a fighter's strength, keeping the match competitive, with the fighters evenly classed. For this round, Horn's strength is decreased. Meanwhile, in the diner, Steve Armstrong, a cook, keenly watches the match on the monitor. Two alien customers impatiently follow up on their orders, so Shorty, the four-armed food counter attendant, pressures Steve to speed it up. Distracted by the fight, Steve gets burned by the burner. Above the arena, Rogor, the top fight manager, sits inside a VIP booth. He monitors Quinn, the human manager of small ring fighters, checking on the damaged spinner. Quinn instructs the trainer, Wayne, to do everything he can to fix her fighter. Discreetly, Rogor calls his enforcer, Weasel, a rat-like alien, to carry out his order. Making his way through the crowd, Weasel passes a syringe to a guard to inject a fluid into Horn's arm to energize the fighter. When the second round starts, Horn dominates Spinner anew and throws his opponent into the audience. As the fight gets out of hand, a shaken Quinn looks for the commissioner, desperate to stop the brawl. Meanwhile, Shorty argues with the two aliens who were kept waiting over the counter. Shorty grabs the two, but another alien, Vang, intervenes. But before he could throw a punch, Steve comes to Shorty's rescue. He beat the alien with his bare hands, throwing him out of the window. An announcement is heard about the detection of employees in Snack Bar 21 violating their service contracts, automatically terminating Shorty and Steve's employment. Steve leaves the diner, telling Shorty he's not cut out to be a short order cook. Shorty warns that without a job in the Star Station, Steve may be deported for vagrancy. But Steve doesn't care about the Star Station and just wants to return to Earth. They reach the sleeping tier but aren't allowed entry. The elderly guard tells Steve his crib has been folded. Without a job and unable to pay for the rest of his deposit, Steve has to go. Luckily, Shorty offers him a place to stay. Meanwhile, Spinner goes under repair. After thorough checking, Wayne concludes the damage is irreparable and fears Spinner's fighting days are over. His assistant, Troy, suggests they try a micro relay, but Wayne disagrees because of the high cost. Still, Quinn assures Spinner they're not going to give up on him yet. Taking back his initial diagnosis, Wayne agrees. His hope hinges on Vang that they'll get the money when he takes the quarterfinals. The doors slide open as Vang shows up in a neck brace and bandages. Quinn, shocked by her fighter's condition, asks what happened. Then, Vang says an earthling beat him up. Shorty leads the way to an access point, telling Steve it's a little thing he can do for him after the ladder protected him. They get inside and climb down to a dark basement. It leads to the tubes of the Star Station, an underworld where homeless humans live. Shorty sees Marcus Diablo, the last human champion. Steve says he's seen almost all of Marcus' fights, and his last fight was 50 years ago. With his passion taking over, Steve reveals he's a human fighter. He has fought in the human circuit and won a lot of fights. He has this dream that one day he can come up to fight in the arena, but there's just no room for real human fighters up there anymore. Farther into the tube, Shorty leads Steve to his room. Steve asks him why he's living down there when he's got a job. Shorty corrects him, saying he had a job. He's been sending all his money to his family in Nebular. Moments later, while Shorty prepares their meal, Wayne and Troy knock on the door. Steve is attacked, and while he's unsure why he's being targeted, he knows he's in danger. With his defense down, Steve suffers badly from the beating. He gets thrown out of the room, where Wayne wants to continue the fight. He tells Steve it's for Vang. Unaware of who Vang is, Steve begins to fight back. Using his fighter skills, he beats Wayne and Troy to a pulp to the delight of the homeless people watching the fight. Quinn appears, and she's highly impressed with Steve. To enlighten him, Quinn explains Vang is one of her best fighters and that she was counting on him. But she finds it hard to believe that an Earthling can fight until she sees Steve. She asks him if he ever thinks of the arena, but Steve states it's not for him. He wanted it once and trained for it all his life. But after getting there a year ago, he couldn't even get to the door. And now that he sees how the arena works, he says it stinks. Shorty intervenes and negotiates a contract. Quinn offers a temporary one, just an option for a year. But Steve still refuses. 
Shorty takes Steve's remaining money to the casino later to raise funds. At a casino table, Steve meets a beautiful lady, and he's quickly smitten. She hands Steve a ball and asks him to roll it for her, and he wins. The lady calls him her lucky charm. Meanwhile, Shorty takes a seat to play a card game but loses. He tries another round and loses again. Suddenly, the police barge in to arrest everyone. Shorty decides they should leave. But on the way, he slips into a room and steals money from a cash box. Weasel sees the two exiting a secret passage. But when he attempts to run after them, the police shoot at him. So he finds another secret passage and escapes. The two meet in a bar after an hour. Shorty surprises Steve with a one-way ticket to Earth. Speechless, Steve is overwhelmed by happiness. Shorty breaks the silence by saying a simple thank you will do. They're now even, he adds. Then, he brings up Quinn's offer, asking Steve to try for a while, and if he doesn't like it, he can quit and go home. Still, Steve says no. Weasel comes and points a gun at Shorty, asking them to go outside. They reach Rogor's office, where he sits waiting. Rogor wants his casino money back, 18,000 Kruger. A bit drunk, Steve reaches inside his pocket and hands Rogor the ticket. Rogor says it's non-refundable, and it's only worth 13,000. Steve asks for a day to bring him the money, but Rogor only gives him 12 hours. Rogor says if Steve doesn't return, Weasel will cut Shorty's fingers. At 3 in the morning, Steve visits Quinn and asks if she's still looking for a fighter. Weasel and Shorty play cards at Rogor's office. In less than an hour, Steve is back with a payment and cold cash. Rogor is impressed, telling him he should be working for him. But Steve says thanks and adds he's already got a job. In the arena, Steve is being prepped for the bout. The spectators are excited because a human fighter will face an alien again for the first time in 50 years. Climbing to the VIP booth, Weasel points out to Rogor that Steve is the new fighter. They now know how Steve got that money. A giant monster with long, sticky legs towers over, but Steve charges and throws a series of punches. The monster stomps forward, and with one powerful kick, it sends Steve rolling to the side. While Steve gets conditioned in his corner, Quinn motivates and tells him if he loses, there won't be another human champion for another 50 years. Before Steve gets back to the stage, Shorty instructs him to hit the monster in its sensor nerve. The monster clobbers him again, but Steve doesn't retreat. He climbs on its back and punches it on the head. Thrown to the floor, Steve gets up to fight again. He keeps punching and pushing the monster out of the ring. The score is now 1-1. One one. In the next round, Steve targets the head again and parries the monster's punches. Getting out of a headlock, he rolls forward between the sticky legs. Steve does a powerful flying kick on the backside, pushing the monster down to the audience. Finally, it's a victory for Steve. The crowd goes wild as Marcus cheers. Then, the announcer says never has he seen in his long and brilliant career such an astonishing debut. Steve is not only a rookie, but an Earthman. Steve muses while Shorty cleans his wounds that the excitement in the arena is something he has never felt before. Shorty asks if he still wants to give it all up and return to Earth, but Steve initially did that to get Shorty out of the jam with the ticket money. Rogor, followed by Weasel, comes into the room to tempt Steve. With the right management, he tells Steve he can go to the top, but Steve wants to stay with Quinn. Rogor brags no one goes to the championship circuit without him. Still, Steve is not interested and guesses he won't be a champion. Rogor tells Steve he'll work for him whether he likes it or not. Unfortunately, this last statement does not sit well with Steve. In the bar, Shorty goes up to the sports writer for some publicity and leaves Steve and Quinn on the table. Rogor comes in with Jade, the lady from the casino. After the introduction, Steve says they've met. Jade confirms it and calls him her lucky charm. She excuses herself because she's about to go on stage for a performance. Later on, Steve faces another opponent in the arena and wins his fourth fight. The commissioner calls Rogor to set a schedule for Steve and give the people what they want. Weasel and his cohort, Skull, come in. Rogor tells them the commissioner wants him to give Steve a title shot. Weasel expresses apprehension that if Steve beats Horn, Rogor will lose control over the championship fights. Rogor fumes and asserts he won't. Weasel proposes a plan that he's been working on with Skull. They've figured out a way to tamper with a handicapper. Rogor laughs because it can't be done. No one can ever get into that infernal computer. But Rogor has his own plan. Steve's sparring with an alien in the gym when Jade comes in. He'll always be distracted by her, and today is no different. He gets clobbered after losing focus. He retaliates with a kick that throws the alien to the wall, ending the workout. On the sideline, Quinn reminds him to work on his combination and keep his lateral movement tight, but Steve is looking at Jade by the entrance. Steve is distracted, but he pretends he's listening. He looks at the entrance again, only to find Jade gone. Steve runs after Jade in the hallway. 
He invites her to get together later to take his mind off things and relax. If he's not relaxed, he can't throw his best punches. Jade then hands him a pass and asks him to meet her at her place in the evening. That night, Steve arrives at Jade's place. She welcomes him, telling him to help himself at the bar while she finishes getting ready. She goes back to her vanity mirror to put perfume on her throat for that extra sensual effect. Unaware of the trap, Steve puts the necklace around her neck. It's too much for him to resist, so he kisses her nape and shoulder. Jade kisses him back, making Steve throw all his caution to the wind. Waking up, she gives him liquor, but Steve says he's not supposed to drink. Wanting to please Jade, he drinks anyway, and she seduces him again. Jade reports to Rogor the next day. He's pleased with the way she's handled Steve, but doubt creeps in when he touches her neck. He asks if she's sure she's not falling for Steve, so Jade says no. Later on, Steve wakes up alone in Jade's bed. He calls for her, but she's not in the room. He tries to get up, but he's too weak. Meanwhile, Horn, the defending champion, breaks the tradition of entering the arena first. He chants his name, but the crowd boos him. In a corner, Shorty is mad that Steve is late, but soon, Steve appears by the entrance, looking extremely weak. They get him on the table and discover he's been drugged. A doctor is called to check on Steve and have his blood tested. Then, the commissioner enters the room and tells the doctor that the crowd will tear the arena apart in 10 minutes if the fight doesn't start. Moments later, the results come out. Steve is loaded with Trimetazine 25. The doctor orders his assistant to inject 50 cc's of Crystal Plex into Steve's forearm, but the machine indicates that his vital signs are critical, approaching terminal. Another two hours and Steve would have been dead, says the doctor. Someone has tried to poison him. A powerful anti-infector is given to the patient, so he should be coming out in 15 minutes. The commissioner wants to know if Steve will be able to fight. The doctor says he can, although not 100%, but he will not take responsibility for it. Turning to Quinn, the commissioner asks if she wants to withdraw. Soon, the commissioner goes to the stage with an official statement. Horn, getting ahead of the announcement, declares himself the champion. Inside the room, Steve struggles to prove he can fight. Quinn has an inkling of who he was with last night, but she still wants an answer. He's her fighter and he's under contract. Steve insists his private life is his business, but Quinn reveals the lady is Rogor's girl. The deception hits Steve hard, and he's rearing to confront Rogor. But Quinn points out that if he's going to fight Rogor, he better fight Horn. She asks him to listen to the crowd, for they're calling for him. Back in the arena, the commissioner apologizes to the crowd for the delay. But as Steve gets on the stage, the commissioner declares the championship fight is about to begin. In the VIP booth, Jade tells a shocked Rogor she gave Steve the poison. Pissed, Rogor summons Weasel through his radio. Minutes later, Weasel shows up in the booth. Rogor orders him to push through with Skull's plan. He wants them to do it all the way so they won't have to worry about Quinn's protege. Steve hits Horn early in the round, landing a lot of punches to the head and body. He moves as if he hasn't been poisoned at all. Weasel sneaks into the control room and disconnects an electrical wire to allow Skull to manipulate the system. He then instructs Skull not to change anything in the first round to make it look legit. In the arena, Steve kicks Horn, surprisingly dominating the fight. Then, the crowd cheers him on. In his booth, Rogor gives his orders to Weasel to go ahead. Skull hacks into the computer, successfully controlling the handicapping system. On stage, Steve begins to feel dizzy and weak as he misses his punches. Horn retaliates with a strong punch that sends Steve to the floor. From the corner, Shorty notices the lights blinking and smells something's wrong. With Horn dominating the second round, the score is now one all. Steve feels something's odd. Thinking he's still weak from the poison, Quinn decides not to continue the fight. But Steve rejects throwing in the towel. In the control room, Weasel tells Skull it's round three, and now they'll kill Steve. Steve gets back to the ring and aggressively fights this time. He punches Horn but takes some back, and he's down again. On the bridge above the arena, Shorty finds Weasel and confronts him. Weasel tries getting his gun, but Shorty kicks it away. He pushes Shorty back, causing the electric panel to short circuit. Meanwhile, the countdown begins as Steve lies on the floor. The computer, which is connected to Skull, goes haywire, causing the alien's head to explode. At the same time, Wayne tells Quinn to look up at the handicapper. Steve gets up, with eyes all swollen and bruised, while Shorty resumes fighting Weasel and pushes him off the bridge. Steve dodges Horn's punches and retaliates with a kick. With a combination of punches and kicks, Steve keeps beating Horn without letting up. He repeatedly lands powerful jabs in Horn's jaw until the alien drops to the floor. The crowd goes wild, and Steve is declared the new champion. Meanwhile, 
Rogor watches in disbelief. Jade walks out as she's been wanting to leave him for quite some time now. Rogor runs after Jade and stops her from leaving, but Jade tells him it's over. She goes over to Steve's corner, thinking he's in love with her. Steve looks at Quinn, and as if she understands her fighter perfectly, she steps forward and punches Jade in the face. The announcer declares Steve as the first human title holder in over 50 years. What's in store for him? Nobody knows. But as long as there are Steve Armstrongs in the universe, there will always be contenders. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.